what I need to do is to transfer this paper copy of a stencil to plastic. The only reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to use this stencil again for other things. So I'm going to go ahead and trace it and then cut it out with an X-Acto knife or a utility knife. If you want, you can just print a stencil out and then cut these little pieces out and then use the paper stencil if you're planning on not using it very often or just for that one time, I mean. And I'm using a black Sharpie to trace this out with. There it is, I've got it all traced. So on this part, I am cutting out the stencil and I've already cut out several pieces. I cut out this, 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 and this. And so I've got to cut out this piece and then the center piece now. So I'm just gonna show you how. I, I brought in a board that I'm not worried about. It's just a scrap piece so, so that I don't scratch the tabletop. And I couldn't find my X-Acto knife, so I'm using a utility knife, and it's working well enough. I'm going to be wearing these shoes with socks, so that's why I have my socks on. Next, I'm just going to cut this out. It made a difference when I put my foot flat on the floor and then double checked the measurement and it ended up being um, a little bit off so I had to add a little bit more on both sides. But yeah, I had my foot initially on the chair but with the, my foot sinking into the chair, it didn't give an accurate measurement. So I put it on the floor and then I redrew the lines again and everything was the same except for around the sides where my arch was. Now what you need to do is give yourself plenty of room for error and draw a line around the outside here. And then you're going to do this twice and you'll cut through both sides of the fabric and this is going to be the edge so we're keeping this nice seam here now we're going to get a video of me cutting this so the next step is to just cut this out You'll do the same thing for both sides.
The next thing you're going to want to do is to uh, put the stencil on it. What I've done basically right now is just wrapped it around the outside of my foot. It's not sewn in place or anything like that. Just so I can get an idea of where I want to put the stencil. I do want it to face up like this and probably be somewhere about right here. See, I could put it up further if I wanted or put it down lower if I want it right above the toe. Just depends on where you want it. I think I want mine about right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and start marking it on with the marker. So I just finished um, outlining the stencil. I may fill these in, I may leave it just open like this, but I did it on all of them. And now I'm just going to show you how I'm, do how I'm doing it. So I'm just going along the outside of it. And like I said, I may fill this in later, but I just wanna see what it looks like with just the outline right now. And if I like the way that looks, then I'll leave it that way. If not, then I'll go ahead and fill it in. But again, I'll do this to both sides of the shoe. And then these, I didn't bother cutting out because they were so small, but I can easily replicate that so I didn't bother cutting it out. And so far, that's what it looks like. As you can see, I've started filling in this and that's just what I am up to here. And I'll continue doing this for the rest of the flower. Coloring all this in with the Sharpie marker. Here's some flip-flops that I bought at the dollar store or at Dollar General. I can't remember where I bought it. I've had them for a while. Anyway, um, so when you make these shoes, what we're going to do is cut it off here, cut it off there, and cut it off there. And then we'll take some of this Gorilla Glue here and put a dab of it inside the hole and then glue this little little spot back into place just so all that'll be left is like a tiny tiny bit of the stem left it won't be showing above the top uh, one thing about this is it's not to the exact shape of my foot and um, so what I did was that I put my foot on top of it and let me show you what I mean Okay, so I'll just flip that over just because I haven't cut that part off yet. So I put my foot on top of this, like this, and then as you can see there's some hanging over the top and that's usually how it looks when I wear these. So what I did is I cut along here and cut the excess off because otherwise the shoe will be a little bit too big and I want it to fit kind of snug since they're slip-ons. Anyway, if you like that extra room at the top of your shoe, just leave it there. But, so when I cut it, here's the one that I've cut and it, it's a lot smaller and then the front is more to the shape of my foot a little bit. The shoe that, the flip-flop that I had bought at Dollar General was a, out of the men's section, so it was a little wide right here, so I did take a tiny bit off, um, and then also a tiny bit off on the heel, because the heels were a little wider. All right, so what I wanna do next is that I've gotta measure the, I'm gonna put a pin here and a pin on this side because what I need to do is to hold this steady so that I can measure the distance from here to here. And I <clears throat> I'm gonna cut a strip of paper. really any kind of paper is fine and measure from I'm gonna have it overlap a little because it's gonna be sewn to this and I want to make sure that I have enough just in case I make a mistake so 
Uh, I think this will be good. Well, it's got to go behind the shoe anyway, so if you have a little extra, that's always better than not having enough. So I'm going to cut it. So I'm going to cut this here. And are you taking a picture of the back of my foot here? Let's see if this fits here. Okay, so this should be long enough, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I want to use this seam here along the back of the shoe and it needs to be two layers thick so I'm going to lay this right here and then cut up here to this edge and to this edge and I have this extra here because um, like I said I want to make it long enough so I'll probably add a little bit more about this much and then cut it off. All right, so now I've got to figure out how high up I want it in the back. If you make it too low, it'll probably slip off your feet a lot. So you need to find out where you feel like it's comfortable and put it there. Okay, once you got it there, you pin back here and then pin on this side into the foam of the shoe. Then you bring this over and you lay this over the top where it's gonna go. Well, I think I need to put this side down a little bit. And this side too. Otherwise it'll be up too high. Okay and then this is going to go here like this. So I'll put a pin here temporarily just to hold it in place. A pin there. And then let's get these pinned together. There we go. And then, um, then what we're gonna do is sew here and sew there. And you'll do the same for the other shoe. The next part is to sew the this side here. You can use a sewing machine if you want or you can sew it by hand. I'm gonna sew it by hand. I'm using some pretty thick thread. This is um, kite string. So it's it's pretty Strong. So basically what I'm going to do is tie a knot. I'm doubling it up. Since it's on a shoe, it's just going to need to have that little bit of extra strength. The and I don't want this uh, knot right here to bug my foot. So I'm actually going to hide it in between these two um, in between these two layers so I'm going to come underneath here and then I'm gonna poke it under when I'm sewing so that way I don't have to worry about it bothering my foot yeah right there we go. So basically, whichever way you want to sew it is fine. 
I'm gonna try to make it so that not too much um, thread is on top and there's a little bit more thread on bottom because I'm gonna be doing a decorative black stitch over the top here later. So when I get down to about here, I'm not gonna videotape me sewing the whole thing, but when I get down to about here, I'm gonna go ahead and stop. And the reason is because the shoe bottom, um, this will actually overlap the shoe bottom and some of this will have to be cut off, but I don't wanna cut off my stitches, so I'm gonna stop about here. It's hard to see because this has a black sole, but I put a dot at every single half an inch and that way when I put the stitches on I'll know exactly where to to put the dot so I know it's hard to see but there's a dot right right there right there right there right there I can see it pretty easily in person, but with the camera it's hard to see, but I just wanted you to know, but to do that around the side of your shoe sole so you can make sure that the stitches are even when you sew it on. And I did mine at every half an inch. Okay, so I've got this uh, sewn together on the sides. As you can see, like I said, I left a gap there. And underneath here, the stitches are a little bit wider than they are on top. So you can't really see the stitches on top. And these are the socks that I'm planning on wearing with it. So here we go. So I'm gonna slide this on here like this, put my foot on here, and then I'm gonna put pins in this to hold this in place where I want it to go. Put one up here. One back here. One on the side there. There we go. One on this side, and then I'm gonna continue all the way around. Putting this on all the way around the outside. I've got all the excess cut off. Yeah. Can you hold this again? Yes. Okay, just try to keep it stuck on where I'm doing this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a pin out. Turn it under right there. 
and then stick the pin back in. Pull the pin out, turn it under, stick the pin back in. And I'm just going to do that all the way around. In some cases, the pins are so close that I'll have to pull two out in order to get this turned under. But I'll turn it under, stick it back in place. Just continue that around the entire outside of the shoe. So I tied a knot in the end of the string and pulled or stuck the needle in on this side and pulled it through on this side. So I have a, a spot here where I'm going to get this started. So what I'm going to do next is hold this down like this. push through here and try to get it to come out where where the dot is where I put the dot previously right on it or just yeah just right close to it it's kind of hard to get it every time because you're coming in from the back side but Okay, so to start it off, what you want to do is to leave a little loop right here. Can you see that? Just leave a little loop, and then you'll stick this through the loop. And that's how you start it off. Okay, then You come here next to the next dot. And then put the string through there, or the needle through there. There we go. And one thing you'll want to be careful of is if you're going to need to tighten this, grab a hold of it and then pull it. Don't just uh, pull on the string because this is, you'll, you're likely to pull through it, which I did once when I first tried it. Okay, so then you just start pulling these out as you get close to them. And you just continue to do that all the way around. So this is how you do this part. You, you've got your knot on the other side and you pop up right here through this portion of the fabric. You come down a little ways, stick your needle through and under. And then you're just doing the same stitch going across. There we go, there's the first one. And 
you continue that across to the other side, just like that. I'm just finishing up these last few stitches here. And just in case you are wondering how to go along an outside edge like this, because so far we've just been sewing into something. And I had to do that here. And so I figured I'd show you how to do that. So you just come around the outside. You know, you don't have to put a stitch on this side. You come around the outside and just loop right back into that, like that. Go through it. Then come around and stick your needle through there. And that's that. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to go right back through here and put a knot on the other side. So this is what the shoes look like now that they're done. They're really, really comfortable. And they're so cute. Yes, they are. And this is what they look like without socks on. So if you're the type of person that likes to wear your shoes without socks, this is what it looks like. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was pretty easy to make these. Thanks a bunch.